At last the final part of my Threadripper build has arrived, and for such a small item you'd think it'd be very easy to find. But to find it in this country is very difficult, and if you do find it, it's extremely expensive. This I actually bought from China, and it was very reasonably priced, actually a third of the price that you'd buy it in the UK. And it came very quickly, very, very fast delivery. I bought it from a company called TVC Mal. That's TVC, like QVC, with the letter T instead, I suppose. And uh, let's just have a look at what it is. All it is, is this. This is a USB 3.1 Type-C patch lead. It has the connector to fit onto the motherboard and on the other end it has a Type-C socket. That's all it is. And yet to buy it in this country is extremely expensive if you can find it. Yet TVC Mal managed to sell it for £11 with delivery when I bought it. First of all, I imagine some of you will put in the comments that buying stuff from China is not a really good idea. As a lot of stuff that comes from there tends to be basically rubbish. But that is not my experience if you buy from reputable sites. TVC Mal seems to be one of those reputable sites. They have a lot of wonderful equipment on there, excellent equipment, that you find really hard or really expensive to get in this country for very reasonable prices. Yes, the delivery takes a bit longer, but it's well worth the wait. Now, the reason I wanted the patch lead was so that I could actually connect my motherboard up to the hub that I had installed here. This hub has two USB 3.1 inputs on the back so that they can feed the USB 3, the card reader, and one of the USB 3.1 outputs on the front. Then there is a second input for the other 3.1 which could also be used as a Thunderbolt port if you had something like an Asus board that had a Thunderbolt uh, connection on it as well. So you could actually rig that up as a 40 megabit per second Thunderbolt port which would be incredible. I don't think that's available on this board yet. I haven't found any add-in boards yet. So I'm just going to plug it in at the back now and put it ready so that when the motherboard is all fitted up then it will be ready to just plug into the motherboard. Now all I have to do is release the Velcro tie downs. Slip the lead in. And plug it in. Feed the connector through, ready to go into the motherboard when the motherboard's fitted. And that's it all ready to go. The hub is now fully connected. The other connector is connected via another extension into the back where the second USB 3.1 output is going to be. One final thing with the case before we begin to fit up the motherboard itself the back plate. If you forget to put this in before you put your motherboard in you end up having to take it all back out again so we have to fit this. Just before I fit it though one thing about this MSI back plate I really really like. All the labels for the ports are in a direction where you can actually read them instead of being the other way around which makes it almost impossible quite often to read them. To fit this in then simply clicks in place so we feed it in click the middle click the top and we're ready now to fit up the motherboard so here we go then we're going to start fitting up the MSI X399 SLI plus motherboard first of all we're going to fit the Ryzen Threadripper the 1920X following that we'll fit the Corsair Vengeance LPX2400 DDR4 memory. 
Then we'll fit the Gigabyte GTX 1080. And finally, we'll fit the cooler, the Noctua NHU9 TR4 SP3. At that point, we'll stop and we'll power it up. We'll plug it in and make sure that everything is booting, the BIOS is showing, and that we can access everything. If everything's okay and everything's working fine, we'll proceed then to fitting it into the case. So first of all then, we're going to install the CPU. Now to install this, you have to open the retaining cover here, and you have to do it in a particular order. As you see, there are three bolts marked one, two, and three. To open it, you proceed in the reverse order, so you open bolt three, two, and one, and the cover should spring open. So we'll do that now, with a special tool that is given to us in the CPU pack. That's three done. That's two. And then finally one. And the cover springs up. The retaining me mechanism lifts up out of the way. Now we have to remove the safety cover here, which protects the pins of the CPU socket. It's a little more difficult on the MSI board because you have this large heat sink here. So you actually have to get in and get your nails in behind the clip on the back here. Once you've done that, you should be able to lift up the mechanism itself. Like that. And then the safety cover will just slide out. And then Finally, you have the cover that covers the pins itself. You then remove the Threadripper CPU from its packaging very carefully, making sure you don't damage anything by banging it against anything or scraping it against anything. You slide it into the tray. You can see there's little guides there and it clicks in as it goes to the bottom and then you push down and it clicks into place finally you put the retaining mechanism back down loosely tighten the first second and third now all the screws have gripped so I can continue to tighten them down and this is a torque wrench so when it gets to the particular setting that you need to actually apply the right amount of pressure you'll hear a click just there and you proceed to the second one again keep turning until you hear that click the click is there and then finally the third and that's it don't over tighten as soon as you feel that click you stop it's in it's in place so that's the CPU installed so the next thing that we're going to install is the memory the reason I'm doing it in this order is because it makes things much easier to fit in place. If you were to put the heatsink in place now, it'd be very difficult to get the memory in. So the memory is going to go in next, then the GPU, and then finally the heatsink itself. So now we're going to install the memory. I do recommend very highly this time that you check the user manual before proceeding with this because they do have to be installed in particular slots. Now I'm going to be using two memory modules so I'm going to have to install these memory modules in slot D2 and B2 which are the two outermost slots from the CPU itself. Now you may think that's a bit counterintuitive, you may think that the two nearest ones would be better because they're closer but they're actually wired in such a way 
to have the two outer slots as the first two to be populated so do follow that instruction however many you are actually going to be installing so now we're going to put the memory modules in now these do only go into the slots in one particular way you can see there that there is a cutout and they match the little areas on the slots themselves so that they can only fit in one particular orientation so do make sure that they are in the right way don't try and force them in if you can't get them in you may have them the wrong way around make sure that the cutout matches up with the slot so we take the first one and we pull back the tab the locking tab there we're going to put it into the outside slot as the manual told us to slide it down and then pressure and the tab clicks in and holds it firmly in place exactly the same for the second one but this time the actual slot is the other way around the first one is that way but as you can see the second one is this way so we pull back the little tab again slide it in to the slot and again firm pressure and you'll hear it click into place the tab will come up and hold it firmly so now the memory is in so next we're going to put the graphics card in now the graphics card I'm going to place into the first slot here now I'm going to put it in for now but I will have to remove it because the M.2 which I'm going to use is right underneath it if I show you the graphics card more or less in place you can see that it covers up the M.2 slot so it will have to come out but all I'm doing at the moment is testing to see that everything is working and that the BIOS is showing when I boot it up first things first take the protective cover off the bottom of the graphics card I've got this box underneath as you can see which raises it up a bit and allows me to put the graphics card in if it was on a flat surface then of course the bottom bit of the bracket here would be sticking down and wouldn't actually be able to put the graphics card in fully line it up again with the PCIe slot press it down and you hear the click there that was the little holder clamp at the back which holds it in place and that's the graphics card in place so finally we are going to put the heatsink on and then we'll connect up the power and a monitor and see if it actually boots up into the BIOS first of all then we need to apply the thermal paste supplied by Noctua remove the end cap there and again check the manual because there is a particular way with the thread ripper of applying the paste Noctua recommends that you first put nine drops Try not, of course, to put too much on. So you've got three sets of three. And then it tells you that you need to put another four. In between. So you've got little sets of five, really, I suppose. Now remember the actual CPUs themselves, there are four dies, two of them are used, and they're where these five go. So I'm just going to apply just a little bit more to those areas, that one's okay. To make sure that they are fully covered. Thermal paste is now applied. So now we can fit the fan itself. Remove the cover. The protective cover that's on there make sure that the base plate is free from any contamination and just use a, a clean microfiber cloth Noctua do say you can remove the fans to fit this but as you can see the mounting screws are quite easily accessible 
and we need to line them up with the holes below on top probably the most nervous part for me this making sure that everything is fitted in the right place so that's lined up we take the tool supplied by Noctua and start to tighten make sure that they're straight and level you don't want to cross thread and just tighten till you feel a little bit of tension and then you go to the next a little bit more got to see this one again make sure it's straight and that one's not quite in that's better Again, just turn it maximum of three turns just to make sure it's got a good bite. And that wasn't in again, so we'll try one more time. That's better, now it's definitely in. Now I can feel the tension. Two and three. And then I always do it diagonally to make sure the pressure is equal. One, two, three, and then finally the last one. Okay, making sure it's in the right place, not cross threaded. A little bit more difficult to see this one because it's right at the back. One, two, no, still not in. There we go, it's in now, one, two, three. So all of them are now in the actual screw threads. So I can start tightening them down properly. So again, three at a time, one, two, three. Move to the next one. One, two, three. Next one, one, two, and that's actually tight now. And then finally, one, two. Right, now they're all just about tight, so you just want to make sure they're just tight. You don't want to over tighten them. So just check that there's a little bit of tension. All done. And then finally the last one. As I said, I like to do my video so that you can see any mistakes I'm making. So if you make the same mistakes, you don't feel as if you're doing something wrong. If it doesn't quite work, just take your time, work your way through it. Make sure the screws are screwed in properly and not cross-threaded. That's the main thing. And don't over-tighten them. So finally then, we need to plug the power leads in for the fan or the fans in this case because there's two now lock to a supply two sets of extensions here singles and a two into one version that's the one we're going to be needing because there's only the one CPU fan header on this board and I need to turn the actual board around so you can see that And that header is just here. Finally then, we connect up the splitter 
one and two. I will do a bit of cable management later to make sure it's a little bit more actually well sorted but at the moment this will do for now. This is just for testing and again when you're fitting up the fan leads there are two little clips here little lines you can see there which only allow the actual header the fan header to be fitted in one particular way so now we have the cpu the memory the graphics card and the heatsink and fan all fitted the next thing to do is to plug in the power connect up a monitor and see if it boots into bios just as I was about to do the first power on test, the battery in my camera ran out, so I've had to change quickly to my backup camera. Basically all I've done now is add the power supply to the motherboard, the power supplies for the CPU and for the GPU. All I need to do is press the button, the power on button, and we'll see if it powers up. I have added, of course, a keyboard and mouse as well. So, let's power on. And the fans are running, all the lights are lighting up. So let's look across and see if the monitor lights up. Takes us into the BIOS. So the monitor is lit. And we're into the BIOS. The board is working. The next part then of the build is to put it into the case, connect up all the ancillaries, put in the hard drives, and then to do the first boot test fully into Windows. Well, thank you for watching this part. This is part 5 of the Threadripper vlog. Part 6, I hope and think, will be the final part of the vlog itself. Though I may do a part 7 if I decide to do some overclocking. But for now, thank you for watching.